Hello everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, which is entitled The Role of Education in the Midst of Pandemic and Establishing Collaborative Teaching and Learning Process. This is a virtual in-service training for teaching and non-teaching staff of Bao National High School. This aims to provide simple, universal access to information and services for teachers, staff, and students. Also, this targets to create a virtual environment that meets the needs of the teachers in the teaching and learning process. Thank you, fellow teachers, for joining us today. I am Jesus Buladajo Rances, a senior high school teacher too of Bao National High School, and I will be your host for today's webinar. At this point, friends, let us begin by giving honor to our country as we sing Lupang Hinira. Please stand. Let us invoke the presence of the Almighty through this prayer, led by Mam Ma Jonalyn Britannico. Let us bow our head and put ourselves in the holiness of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Almighty and ever-loving God, we glorify and thank Thee your name. You have showered us with so much blessings and your presence continuously remind us of your faithfulness and guidance. We humbly ask you to shower our speakers today of your greatest inspiration so that they may share the most of their knowledge, heart, and soul to their respective topics. May we also absorb the invaluable knowledge experiences and put it into practice that we may learn today. We pray that you bless all the committees in charge that they may be able to fulfill their tasks responsibly, that the objectives they have set may all be achieved. Your infinite blessings would mean the success of this seminar. May we be a living witnesses of your genuine love through the enactment of the knowledge acquired through this activity. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. This time, I would like to invite our dynamic principal, Dr. Lilibet Fajardo Morale for the opening remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, a resounding applause, please. My respect to our very charming and kind new PSDS of Baao District for Secondary, Dr. Lourdes Arnopre, to our eight head teachers of Baao National High School, Ma'am Juliet Botter for Mathematics, Myla Opeño for Science, Ma'am Helma Norte for Filipino, Ma'am Janice Vanessa for English, Sir Pastor Bustilla for Araling Panlipunan, Ma'am Peli Vargas for TLE, Ma'am Mary Jane Bolivar for ESP, and Ma'am Eva Gomez for MAPE. To our Assistant Senior High School Principal, Ma'am Juvi Bolalin, to our highly proficient and adept Master Teachers, to our school learning and development team, the IT team, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. As part of our objectives in the staff development in our learning continuity plan this school year 2020 to 2021, 
Our school learning and development team composed of the school head and the head teachers thought of giving our teachers background knowledge on the learning de delivery modalities and learning assessment. And in cooperation with the IT team, we come up with this virtual inset which is entitled The Role of Educators in the Midst of Pandemic Establishing a Positive and Collaborative Teaching and Learning Process It is composed of four days which will start today, August 3 The second day will be on August 5 Third day is on August 7 And the last day will be on August 10 I really appreciate the team for this collaboration, most especially the master teachers who accepted my challenge of giving their expertise to our teachers, as well as the guidance of the department heads, and most especially the effort exerted by the sleepless nights labor of Heracles Obenya, Jesus Rances, Maricon Rances, Jami Barayuga, Alice Cargulio, V. Peñones, and Sir Roderick Bigeja. I commend their efforts for coming up with this excellent webinar. As a start, they, I already consider that as an excellent one. And I am glad that Amidst the pandemic that we have been experiencing and despite the fear that we feel when we go out every time we go out from our respective houses, still there is the spirit within the teachers to serve our learners. Continue that zest and spirit in your hearts, my dear teachers. Be always positive and steadfast and always give purpose in everything that you do especially now that we are in this crisis to all our teachers i hope that you will take this virtual inset this fit seriously and that i hope that you will get something from the from our very competent speakers for you to be to benchmark and to use it in your own teaching so, today I welcome you to our virtual inset, a webinar series labored by our respective IT team and the school learning development team. Mabuhay Bao National High School. Thank you, Ma'am Bibibet. Moving right along, let us welcome our new PSDS or Public Schools District Supervisor of Baal. Dr. Lourdes R. Nopre for the inspirational message. Friends, let's give Mam Lourdes a resounding applause, please. Hello, good day, everyone. My high-respected, ever-beautiful principal, Ms. Lilibet Fajardo, to the proponent of this in-service training, to the department heads, and a big thank you to all participants present for this three-day INSET 2020. Congratulations, Bao National High School, for organizing this incident, entitled The Role of Education in the Midst of Pandemic. Thank you for your answer to the calling of the department that each one of us should think, collaborate, and cooperate on how we can improve and help ourselves in order that we could embrace the new normal in the Department of Education. It's quite hard to take off on this new normal. But if we are all willing, able, and dedicated to learn in order that we could be of service to our students, I'm sure that we can do it all amidst COVID-19. For quite some time now, educators have been talking about the need to rethink how we educate our students. This might just be the disruption that the deaf ed needed to get us all to rethink how we educate and questions what we need to teach and what we are preparing our students for. 
So as we educators handle with the, with the new ways of communicating with our students away from our classrooms and lecture rooms, it is a good time to reflect on how this crisis can help us define what learning should look like for this present generation and even beyond. In the midst of this COVID-19 crisis, we are sure that fellow educators like us are wondering what we need to be preparing our students for in the future. The COVID-19 crisis may well change our world and our outlook. It may also teach us about how education needs to change to be able to better prepare our young learners for what the future might hold. Lessons like educating learners in an interconnected world. COVID-19 is a pandemic that illustrates how globally interconnected we are. There is no longer such thing as isolated issues and actions. Another lesson would be redefining the role of the educator. The concept of an educator as a knowledge holder who imparts wisdom to their students is no longer fit for the purpose of the 21st century education, with students being able to gain access to knowledge and even learn a technical skill through a few clicks on their phones, tablets, and computers. So, we really need to redefine the role of the educator in the classroom. Maybe the role of the educators will need to move towards facilitating students' development as contributing members of society. Another would be teaching life skills needed for the future. In this ever-changing global environment, students and young people require resilience and adaptability. The skills that are probing to be essential to navigate effectively through this pandemic. Looking into the future, maybe some of the most important skills that employers will be looking for will be creativity, communication, collaboration, and emotional intelligence. Another lesson would be unlocking technology to deliver education. The COVID-19 pandemic has resulted almost all schools across the world being compelled to suddenly utilize the suit of available technological tools to create content for remote learning for students in all sectors. Experiencing new ways to do things differently, these are some of the new modes of instructions that are new particularly in the kindergarten to grade 12 level. Yes, the role of the parent is critical during this time, but so is the responsibility of the government to our learners. We know that the child is one of the most important assets of the nation. That is Presidential Decree Number 603. Every effort should be exerted to promote his welfare and enhance his opportunities for a useful and happy life. The natural right and duty of parents in the rearing of the child for civic efficiency should receive the aid and support of the government. Every child has the right to an education, commensurate with his abilities and to the development of his skills for the improvement of his capacity for service to himself and to his fellow men. So the point is, education is a human right, and all the Filipino children have the right to do it. It should not stop. Government must ensure that education should not stop during this pandemic where their mental health becomes an issue. Education's new normal is more than just creating a safe environment for the students and teachers as well. It is also being efficient in the use of technology. It is also about finding the best learning platform for students to use. It is also about addressing the educational needs unique 
to its community. It is also about additional funding and resources. It involves a lot of preparation from the technology itself to the producing of modules and materials and training of teachers. And also, creating online programs is also very crucial. Even in the midst of the crisis, we must think about the children. Governments should only should urgently address their needs. We need to save our children. Thank you, Ma'am Lourdes. And now, to give us the statement of purpose of this webinar, let us welcome the vivacious Assistant Principal for Academics of Senior High School, Ma'am Pavita B. Bulalim. Please put your hands together for Ma'am Juby. Hello, good day everyone. This is Ma'am Juby Bulalakao Bulalim, Assistant Principal 2 of Bao National High School. The idea behind this webinar is to better equip teachers of what considerations to make as they face their students in the new normal. This is also to prepare them about the modalities of learning on what modality they will use as they go on teaching comes August 24. With this webinar, they will come to realize that whatever modality they are to use, they will be dealing with the same set of students, meaning they have to teach the same quality teaching, employing the same quality assessments in order to assure the Department of Education with the quality graduates at the end of the term. It is always nice to attend webinars. With webinars, we learn, we are refreshed, we are honed on the new techniques, new strategies, creativities, and many other things for which we can use as we go on teaching. We become better persons upon listening to better speakers. Therefore, whenever there is a seminar, a webinar, especially these days or during this pandemic time, webinars are always around. Find time to listen to the speakers. Along with the preparation for this coming school year, paying attention to speakers will always be a nice venture to take. Ideas that you could take from the speakers will become very useful as you go along while teaching during this crisis, the pandemic times. Therefore, kindly enjoy Enjoy listening to the speakers as they discuss ideas about the new normal education. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mom Judy. Next in line is the Energizer through a video presentation.
this juncture, may I request Ma Marico Robosa for the thought of the day. Good morning. Our thought of the day is, we will teach in a room, we will teach now with a sleep. We will teach in our house, we will teach with a mouse. We will teach here and there, we will teach because we care. Thank you very much, Ma Maricar. And now, to give us the do's and don'ts in this virtual in-service training, please join me as we welcome Sir Hercules Obenya. Thank you, Sir Rancis. Now, may I remind you everyone of the do's and don'ts in this webinar. The first rule, pay attention to the resource speaker. Second rule, have a notebook and pen with you for taking down notes. Rule number three, I wish to remind everyone that today you are in official attendance to this virtual gathering, meaning you should be in a blue-colored school shirt even at home. Rule number four, focus on the topic being discussed. If there are questions, write your questions first and save it later. Lastly, do not mute this video. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Hercules. At this point, to introduce the resource speaker for the topic Synchronous and Asynchronous Online Teaching and Learning, let us welcome the Head Teacher 3 of Technology and Livelihood Education and the Senior High School Coordinator, Ma'am Felisa R. Vargas. A warm applause, please. Good morning, everyone. Our first speaker is the Master Teacher of Mathematics Department of Baal National High School. She took up her bachelor's degree in agricultural education at the Camarinesor State Agricultural College. Because she loves mathematics, she took up bachelor in secondary education major in mathematics at the University of St. Anthony. Today, she will be sharing her knowledge and expertise in synchronous and asynchronous online teaching and learning. Friends, Mom Judita Barila Bisena. Good morning! I am tasked to discuss about synchronous and asynchronous teaching. Now, the global pandemic has given us a big problem, not only in our health, but also to the accessibility of quality education. This provides us a paradigm shift which composed most of learners and teachers. But education must continue despite of this pandemic. According to our Secretary, DepEd Secretary, Ma'am Leonor M. Briones, learning is a continuous process. Okay, let's start with the synchronous learning. Ano yung synchronous learning? This is similar to the face-to-face -face traditional classroom teaching. Dahil po, magkaharap po yung teacher at saka yung mga learners. And pwede rin itong gamitin natin on online learning. Katulad ng teleconferencing, nagle-lesson or nagle-lesson yung teacher, naka-online yung mga estudyante at the same time. Pwede ring gamitin natin ito sa mga group chat. Dahil yung mga yung mga estudyante, pwedeng magtanong sa teacher kung ano yung le, hindi nila naintindihan na lesson. Pwede rin gamitin ito sa video call dahil nagfi-face to face sila kahit nasa video. So yan po ang tinatawag nating synchronous learning. Pwedeng online, pwedeng face to face. Pero sa panahon natin ngayon, Siguro, online ang gagamitin natin using video call or video messaging or group chatting at pwede ring sa mga text messages. Kaya lang, kailangang mas sagot kaagad. 
pwede rin gamitin yung text messages kung magtatanong sa teacher kung ano yung lesson on that day na hindi niya naintindi dapat with that allotted time. May allotted time pong kagamitin. Hindi yung magtatanong ko kung after ng after 5 hours. Magbabalik ka doon sa ano. Hindi pwede. Dahil ito po ay may real time talaga na ginagamit. So, kung halimbawa itong centronos ang gagamitin natin, ano? So, yun nga ang sabi ko, pwedeng face to face, pero sa ano lang sa online, dahil sa panahon ngayon, hindi tayo mag, hindi, hindi po tayo mag face to face, hindi pa tayo pinapayagan ni DepEd Secretary. So, kung ang gagamitin natin ay centronos, so yun po, may allotted time, may real time. Real time talaga ang gagamitin. So, yan po ang synchronous teaching. Advantages naman ng virtual learning. Ito po yung kinatawag nating online learning. So, dito po, yung mga bata hindi na kailangan lumabas ng bahay, hindi na kailangan pumunta dito sa school para mag-aral. So, steady na lang po sila sa bahay. Hindi na kailangan na, ma hindi na, kailangan na maligo. So, pwedeng kahit pagkagising nila, kung oras ng, oras ng klase nila, ay pwede silang mag-attend ng klase, magbukas ng cellphone o kaya ng computer. Pati rin yung mga magulang, pwede rin silang sumali sa lesson natin sa online. Yan po ang advantage. Hindi na kailangan na lumabas yung mga bata na pumunta dito sa school para lang mag-klase. Isa pa sa mga advantages ng virtual learning, yun pong tipid tayo mga magulang. Dahil sa bahay lang po mag-aaral yung mga bata, hindi na po tayo bibili ng mga gamit natin sa mga pang klase, hindi na po kayo bibili ng uniform, hindi na po kayo bibili ng sapatos, at hindi na rin po kayo magbibigay ng baon. Dahil po, sa bahay na lang po sila mag-aaral. At isa pa po, yung mga magulang, pwede rin po kayong matuto. Pwede rin po kayong makisali sa aming le online learning. Pwede rin kayong makisali sa mga bata, sa mga anak ninyo na habang nag-online, habang sila ay haba kayong kumakain, pwede kayong makinig o kaya pwede kayong makapag klase online. At isa pa, pwede rin po yung mga makulang, pwede na po kayong matuto. Pwede kayong mag-aral kung sakali po yung mga anak ninyo ay merong hindi po naintindihan tapos kayo Nakinig din po kayo sa amin, so pwede rin po kayong makapagturo sa kanila. So yan po ay isa pa pong advantages sa sa synchronous learning or sa online learning. Ano naman po yung mga disadvantages sa ating synchronous learning? Sa face-to-face -face po, madali sana ito. Dahil harapan po yung mga yung teacher sa kayo mga estudyante. Madali po yung madali pong matuto yung mga bata. Pero ang disadvantage po dito ay may posibilidad pong mahawa yung mga bata sa virus na nasa atin ngayon. Dahil po sila po ay lalabas. May expose po sila. Kaya yun po ang disadvantages sa disadvantage sa face to face. Dito naman po sa virtual learning sa online. Ano naman po yung disadvantage? Disadvantages dito. Yung rigid schedule po. Kinakailangan nilang bumangon kung talagang schedule ng klase. Kinakailangan nilang mag-attend sa oras na yun dahil yun po ang oras ng pagklase. Hindi na po muna sila pwedeng maglaro dahil 
naka-schedule po sila ng klase nila online. Another disadvantages po dito sa virtual learning, or yun pong technical difficulties. Kung minsan po, magbabrown out. Kung minsan po, mahina po yung signal ng internet. Kaya, yan po ay mga, yan po ay isa sa mga disadvantages sa virtual learning or sa online learning. Yung mahina po yung internet connectivity ta. Dito naman tayo sa asynchronous learning. Ito po ay yung kabaliktara ng synchronous. Dahil dito po ay wala po tayong oras. This is in real time. Hindi po dito mag-e-interaction yung teacher at saka yung estudyante or ang mga learners. May free time po dito yung mga learners. Pwede silang mag-answer, pwede silang gumawa ng kanilang mga outputs sa oras na gusto nila. Basta po, may, makasubmit po sila on due date. Dahil po, ito po ay may due date. So, pwede silang habang, habang nag-review ng lesson ng teacher, pwede silang mag Laba, pwede silang gumawa ng mga gawaing bahay. Dahil hindi naman po dito kailangan na makipag-interaction sila sa kanilang teacher. So, pwede silang habang nag nagle-lesson si, si teacher, pwede silang hindi muna sila mag-view. Pwede after na lang ng ginagawa nila, saka na lang sila magbubukas ng kanilang cellphone o kaya ng kanilang computer. Saka na lang nila i-view yung lesson ng, ng teacher. Pwede nilang sagutan yun anytime kung free time na sila. Pero meron din po itong due date. Dapat makasubmit din sila sa due date ng teacher. So yan po ang asynchronous learning online. Hindi po ito, wala po itong real time. May free time po yung mga estudyante. Kung ano po yung gusto nilang oras, kung ano po yung kanilang mga learning styles, nasa, sa, nasa kanila na po yan. Kung paano nila sagutan yung lesson na ipinag Ga, pinagagawa sa kanila ng kanilang mga teacher. As long as makasubmit po sila on due date. So, yan po ang asynchronous learning. Pwede po yung lesson ni teacher, pwede nilang i-view na lang kung anong gusto nilang oras. Pwede after ng kanilang pag bonding with friends. Basta, yung lesson po na dapat na makasubmit sila on due date, makasubmit sila. Isa na po dito ang example, yung modular, yung mga modules po. Ibibigay po sa kanila, sa mga bata, yung module na good for one week siguro yun. So, pwede nilang sagutan yun maski isang araw lang ng pag, ano, pwede nilang sagutan yun. So, hindi kinakailangan dito na makipag-interact sila sa mga teacher nila. So, yan po ang asynchronous. Meron po tayong tatlo po advantages sa asynchronous learning. Isa dito ay yung flexibility. Yung mga estudyante ay pwede nilang i-balance yung kanilang pag-study. Habang nag-aaral, pwede silang mag-work sa bahay. Habang nag-view ng video, 
ng lesson ng teacher, pwede silang gumawa ng kanilang -kani -kani mga gawain. Kung ano yung gusto nilang gawin. Another is pacing. May kanya-kanya po silang schedule. Hindi po dito kailangan yung mag-attend talaga sila on time. Pwede silang magkanya-kanyang oras sa pag-view ng lesson ng teacher. Another is affordability. Ito pong asynchronous learning na ito online ay affordable po ito sa mga estudyante. Dahil kahit po mag-load lang sila ng, ng 30 pesos, pwede na sila pong ma, makapag-view ng lesson nila for the whole week. So, in 30 pesos time, o kaya maski yung mga pinakamababang pagluload baga ng ano sa cellphone, na basta makaview na po ng YouTube o kaya ng mga video. So, madali po nilang, madali po silang makapag-aral ng lesson na bigay ng teacher online. So, affordable po yan. Ano naman po yung mga disadvantages dito po sa asynchronous online learning? Isa po ay yung isolation dahil po solo lang po sila, mahiwalay po sila sa karamihan ng mga kaklase niya. Solo lang po siyang sasagot ng kanyang mga outputs. Solo lang po siyang gagawa ng project na binigay ng teacher. So, hindi po siya makakapag-interaction sa mga kaklase niya. So, yan po ang disadvantage na asynchronous. Solo lang po siya. Maka-isolate po siya. Then, another po, yung disadvantages po dito ay yung risk of apathy. Mawawalan po sila ng interest na mag-aral. So, yan lang po. Kailangan po nating mga magulang na Ma ano natin yung mga anak natin na mag-aral online. Huwag po natin pabayaan silang mag-ano lang na, ay ayaw ko mama, ayaw kong mag-answer dyan sa ibinigay na lesson ni teacher. So, kinakailangan po yung mga magulang, i-assist nila yung mga bata. Dahil po, ito po ay talagang gagawin natin ngayon sa panahon natin ng pandemic. Kailangan po natin ng online learning. So, mga magulang, nakikiusap po kami na kung pwede po, paki-assist po ng mga anak ninyo para po makapagpatuloy po sila sa pag-aaral. Para po matapos natin yung ating school year. Kahit po nasa crisis po tayo. Para po malinawan kayo, para po malinawan po yung mga kay mga, mag mga magulang, mga estudyante. So, meron pa ako ditong pinag-prepare na video tungkol po sa synchronous and asynchronous learning. So, let's watch this. Synchronous and Asynchronous Learning What is Synchronous Learning? A traditional classroom is an example of Synchronous Learning, where all students learn the same things at the same time and in the same place. What is Asynchronous Learning? Asynchronous Learning is the opposite of Synchronous Learning, a student-centered teaching method that uses online resources to facilitate learning without requiring students and instructors to be in the same place and at the same time. 
Asynchronous learning requires asynchronous communication tools with types of communication. It has modes, benefits, downsides, and its uses. It can be used as of email, websites, discussion boards and forums, discussion guidelines, blogs, web blogs, wikis, Facebook, Twitter, podcasting, e-portfolios, and threaded conferencing systems. Course management systems such as Campus Cruiser Learning Management System, Desire to Learn, Blackboard, Web City, Google Classroom, OneNote Class, LRMDS for the support learning materials, Deped Commons, Moodle, Edmodo, and Sakai. They have been developed to support online interaction, allowing users to organize discussions, post and reply to messages, and upload and access multimedia. Asynchronous learning advantages. Learners can study at any time and at any pace according to their own needs. Students have the ability to go back to their pieces they need to brush up on. There is the opportunity to review outside resources to aid instruction. Asynchronous learning disadvantages limited access to an instructor and or getting answers in real time. Some students may struggle without constant guidance and instruction. Not all instruction is best suited for self-paced learning. Not all students have the proper or even have equipment most especially in public schools except they were provided by the government or school. Asynchronous learning roles of teachers. Online learning requires a shift from a teacher-centered environment to a student-centered environment where the instructor or the teacher must take on multiple new roles. The constructivist theory that supports asynchronous learning demands that instructors become more than dispensers of knowledge. It requires that they become instructional designers, facilitators, and assessors of both grades and their teaching methods. Asynchronous learning on roles of learners. The student-centered nature of asynchronous le online learning requires students to be actively involved with and take more responsibility for their own learning. Students are required to become proficient with the technology required for the course, use new methods of communication with both peers and instructors, and strengthen their interdependency through collaboration with their peers. Okay, yan lang po sa mga teachers, mga parents, mga learners. Mapa-asynchronous po o kaya ay mapa-synchronous learning. Mas kaalin po dito, let's move forward para po sa kapakanan ng lahat, isulong natin ang edukasyon. So yan lang po. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ma'am Judita Bisenyo, for discussing the topic Synchronous and Asynchronous Online Teaching and Learning. Let's give Ma'am Judita a resounding applause, please. Next in line, to introduce the resource speaker for the topic Leadership and Management in Virtual Classroom and Office, let us again welcome the Head Teacher at Lee of the Technology and Livelihood Education Department and the Senior High School Coordinator, Ma'am Felisa R. Vargas. A big round of applause, please. Hello. Thank you for being with us. Today, we are pleased to have our second speaker, the graduated at the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. The initiator of the special program in the arts curriculum of Baal National High School master teacher of Mapi Department. Currently, he is the DepEd Region 5 OIC Education Supervisor in Mapi. He will share his expertise in leadership and management in the virtual classroom office. Friends, let's welcome Sir Juvencio Poliente and Vino. Good day, everyone. The present situation of our country and of the world with regards to COVID-19 pandemic imposes on us educators to navigate different teaching learning modalities. 
to assure continuous learning of our students, these things must be done and we have to improve and be creative in our teaching processes. Though some of these alternative delivery modes were already being undertaken by some educational institutions, for example, modular learning, blended learning, and online classrooms, these are new terms and experience for most of us. My presentation focuses on how teachers practice leadership in online classes. I must say that these practices are not the only way. I am sure that as we become more familiar with this mode, we can add more practical, relevant, and effective leadership practices. There are webinars offered by DepEd and other institutions, and we can learn a lot by attending to these online seminars. It isn't always as obvious as it seems in classrooms and online students feel let down or sometimes neglected. Many of us teachers are quite apprehensive in this new modality of teaching. Even well-meaning teachers can fail to assume the leadership mantle in their programs by making the wrong assumptions about their students or striking the wrong balance. Since majority of us will be embarking on this new teaching method, there are some pointers I would like to share with you with regards to this new role of ours. And number one, teachers empower students. Independence is not always something students bring with them on day one. Teachers need to set expectations as well as provide tools, resources, and support to get students to a place where they can self-manage throughout the course. Any given class is bound to have a mix of introverts and extroverts, and it's often up to teachers to ensure that both personality types are given the chance to function and thrive. Teachers open the door for students to succeed. It is still up to the students to enter. Empowerment in online classroom means eliminating ambiguity. So everything should be clear during our online classes by planning ahead and maintaining visibility. When students know what is expected of them, what tools are available to them, what is coming next and where their teachers is in all of this, then they have everything they need to own their learning and succeed. Our students should feel this ownership of learning and this will be their springboard to a fruitful and meaningful learning experience. Number two, teachers should foster communication. Student empowerment begins with quality communication. It does not happen automatically just because the subject is interesting or the platform is equipped with cutting-edge tools. Good communication is cultural. It, it begins with the instructor setting an example of proactive engagement. This means doing more suggesting that such questions are welcome or any other such open door policy. Open door policies are a good idea gone bad in many cases. Simply inviting students to bring their problems to you won't cut it. Engagement can start with a passive, you know where to find me. It is easy for students to perceive teachers as aloof or inaccessible. Teachers should take this to heart and be more proactive in their communication with students. Leaders set the example to be followed, then maintain that pattern continuously. If teacher starts its lesson with individualized communication and outreach, students are more likely to see this as normal and actually take advantage of their instructor's availability. Number three, teachers lead through assessment. Students can always be counted on to recognize or admit when they don't get something. Similarly, they can always accurately assess when they do get the material. In both cases, 
Teachers aren't just there to issue grades and critical feedback. They are there to recognize knowledge gaps and obstacles to comprehension and address them. Self-awareness can only go so far when the concepts or subjects are novel. This is when teachers need to help students help themselves. I repeat, this is when teachers need to help students help themselves rather than leaving them behind. E-learning accountability is absolutely two-way. Students will fail if they expect instructors or other students to initiate discussions and advance this course. Instructors will fail their students if they do not foster open lines of communication, provide diverse outlets for feedback and ongoing assessment, and engage its student directly from time to time. Assessment, like good leadership, is not just about judgment, but about playing on strengths to confront weaknesses. Formative assessment can be a powerful tool to keep struggling students from failing cumulatively when they are struggling in one area or on one subject. Online learning gets a bad rap from both instructors and students who focus only on the passive recorded lecture approach. Educators and students recognize that this is neither engaging nor particularly effective. The best kinds of courses and programs involve both synchronous and asynchronous elements. Okay, most of us uh, are not familiar with these terms. Synchronous means virtual. You can see each other through the devices that you are using. Asynchronous means not online. You give them digital copies of your lesson. So it's important that we combine both synchronous and asynchronous elements in our online classes because both elevate the level of engagement and present new challenges. Students need a will to step up and lead conversations, pursue discussion and collaboration, and support one another's learning to make the most of these elements. Instructors must also find creative ways to reach each of their students and ensure communication is never compromised by the virtual medium of instruction. So the following are the things we need to consider in managing our virtual classroom to make our classroom engaging. Preparation is the key and preparation can be done by preparing our instructional materials. Instructional materials includes presentations, slides, video clips, demo materials, so, if we spend sleepless nights preparing our lesson plans before, we shall have sleepless nights and sleepless days preparing our instructional materials. We also have to prepare the modules. However, the DepEd Regional Office as well as the Central Office has been working hard and working double time to make the modules available before the start of classes on August 24. Also, we must prepare the assignments that we will give to our students since we will be meeting them not every day. So it's important that students are guided on the tasks that they will do. Okay, others would be the assessment tools that we should do post-tests, and other enrichment materials. We must also do a virtual meeting. Virtual meeting is important and the benefits are the following. So when we conduct virtual meeting, students feel connected to teachers and classmates. As we all know, we miss everyone, more so our students miss their classmates. 
So if we can have a virtual meeting, this will be a chance for our students to meet their classmates. Also, by conducting virtual meeting, we, we can monitor our students. We can see their physical features. We can see how beautiful and handsome they have become. And also, we can praise them. We can comment. And the last one is students can air out clarification and other concerns clearly. So, by doing virtual meeting, we can have an idea on what the students are feeling with regards to the virtual classes that we are conducting. Now, we must also build a good teacher-parent relation. And to achieve this, we must always advise the parents the following. Parents should provide a structured environment during online classes. Kasi sila ang nasa bahay, sila ang kasama ng mga estudyante, sila ang nakakatanda. So, we must advise the parents and therefore, it's very important that we have a good communication with the parents of our students. To provide maximum teaching learning experience during online classes, we advise parents to turn off unwanted electronics during class. So, wala mo nang maingay na mga radyo, wala mo nang naka-switch on na television, wala mo nang ibang pinapanood, wala mo nang ibang nagkikwentuhan, so that our students could concentrate on their class. And if we eliminate this unwanted electronic devices, we limit distractions. And the last one, do not bother your child while studying. So since parents can see whether their children are doing online class or doing uh, virtual classes, we can advise them not to bother their children. Wag mo nang uutusang magsaing, umigib, or to do household chores. Even if they are at home, please inform parents that these are teaching periods for their students. Also, parents should also prepare for each online class ahead. So it's not only us teachers who will be preparing ahead. Since we will be sending the parents their schedule, Therefore, they should set schedule for online classes so that they would know when their children would face the laptop or when their children would open their devices to attend to their classes. And they must also ensure that the child has supplies. So beforehand, we must inform the parents if there are materials which are needed for our classes. We must tell the parents to encourage their children to excel. It's not only us teachers now who will be giving encouragement, but more so the task is given to parents to encourage their child to excel. Set up rules and expectations ahead of time. Now, discuss the rules and norms with your students. Let them be part of the process by establishing rules. Ask them for ideas and suggestions about the structure of the lesson. I am sure that every one of us knows how to do this because we conduct this at the start of uh, the classes, the first day of classes. We set the rules and norms for our classes. You must also use polite and respectful language, eye contact, explain what language and expressions are acceptable, and which words are absolutely not acceptable in your virtual classroom. So, our students should be guided by the language and be respectful and be polite at all times in our virtual classrooms. Now, this is important 
we must discuss with our students the appropriate attire to wear during live online lessons. For instance, pajamas or sleeveless or sandals are not appropriate for the class even when attending the lesson in a virtual classroom from their own rooms or from their homes. So, kahit po nasa bahay, we must uh, encourage our students to dress appropriately so that they must have the feel that they are in school. If possible, we must ask our parents to let their children wear school uniforms if they have school uniforms. Now next is, while conducting uh, lectures or lessons, sometimes there's a need for children to ask questions. So how to raise your hand in the virtual classroom, answer questions, and participate in discussions without interrupting. So show your students how to use the raise hand button. This makes a gesture that represents hand raising. I know this will be difficult for most of us kasi nga I experienced this during our online conferences that some teachers are taking hard time using the raise hand button. They just speak. So when they want to ask or answer a question or express an opinion, ask them to use the raise hand button. For this, you can use the chat features in the virtual classroom. Kasi po sa virtual classroom, meron din pong chat features. So they can use this to ask questions, not to say hello or hi to their classmates. Set an example for the behavior that you expect from your students. Lead by example by following the established norms in terms of dress code, polite language, no distractions, etc. Students will always notice if you are the one who isn't following the rules, which can lead with issues on discipline. Number five is establish a routine. Students feel more confident and comfortable when the study process is well established and the procedures are predictable. When students know what to expect, it is easier for them to follow the norms and to participate in the learning process. Follow the norms and the lesson structure that is established at the beginning of the course. For example, if you prefer to start the session by checking homework, do this step every time. It's good to have a routine for both the beginning and end of the online session. Be sure to follow the established routine to make the study process more effective. Number six is we have to deal with discipline issues in the virtual classroom immediately and without any exceptions. It is inevitable that you will have to deal with discipline issues, especially when tutoring groups and young students. The best way to keep the balance in your virtual classroom is to deal with discipline problems immediately. It is a good idea to research various approaches for handling different situations such as distractions, interruptions, interrupting, etc. But keep a positive attitude and be respectful even when you have to correct an unacceptable behavior. It is recommended to talk to each student who breaks the rules privately. Uh, we can do this by sending SMS or messages, even on Messenger, talking to them, using video calls. And we must do this privately after class to encourage them to improve their behavior and to figure out the causes of their actions. We must also include everyone and encourage questions. One of the most important things in online tutoring in a virtual classroom is to be sure that every student participates in the lesson. Encourage students to ask questions and to answer each other. Include various teamwork projects and divide the students into groups working in different breakout rooms. So you will be oriented perhaps by our ICT 
how these breakout rooms happen. So you can group them uh, virtually. For future projects, you can switch the teams around. It's a good idea to keep track of which students are the most active in asking and answering questions and to motivate the more quiet learners to participate more. Encourage critical thinking and healthy competition. We must be friendly, but firm. We create a delightful and friendly atmosphere in our virtual classroom with a vibrant mood, fresh content, and interesting activities. A positive attitude is much more effective with students of all ages than punishment. Students like teachers who are friendly but fair. Be easygoing and open-minded, but also make sure that everybody follows the established norms. Number nine, be confident and positive. Online tutoring is an experience that cannot be described with words. Let your students see how much you like and enjoy your job by being positive and friendly in your virtual classroom. Teach with confidence. If you don't feel confident, do your best to make it look like you do because otherwise your students will sense your hesitation. The best way to avoid stressful situations during teaching is to prepare in advance. Take some time to research different general scenarios, discipline issues, provocations, or other problems that, that might occur in the virtual classroom and rehearse your response. You can write down different ideas for answers and reactions in cases of students misbehaving and keep the list in front of you. The more you practice online teaching, the better you will be able to manage your virtual classroom with your own unique style. So practice makes perfect. And lastly, we must praise our students. One of the first things you need to establish along with the rules and norms in your virtual classroom is the reward system. Explore different ways of praising your students when they are making progress. You can use badges, cartoons, puppets, songs. Let's just be creative. When teaching your children, you can motivate also the adult learners with different things like creating a list of achievers or appointing them as leaders of teams in projects and other virtual or online activities. With all of this, thank you very much and good day. Thank you so much, Sir Jovencio F. Alvina, for discussing the topic leadership and management in the virtual classroom and office. Congratulations to your new endeavor. Fellow teachers, let's give Sir B a resounding applause, please. Fellow teachers, I think we are good for now. Thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure being with you today. Thanks again and see you next time.